exclamation, everybody, and welcome to Kingsway. Didn't really uh, start up, uh, not much to see on your screen right now, and I apologize for that because I thought it was going to go through its normal startup routine, and it didn't because I've already played a little bit of the game. As you can see, I already have a dead warrior there, um, but uh, it's a RPG that is modeled as though it were a Windows 95 operating system. It's actually a really cute concept. Um, as with many games that are published under Adult Swim games, it has, it's got this very unique, it's, it's very different in its presentation and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it also suffers from the same thing that every um, Adult Swim game suffers from. We'll probably see that in a little bit, but for now, we'll stick it with the, the stuff that's really cool about the game. So before we get into a new adventure, uh, there is a, there is a shop here. It's not what you think. <laughs> you might be thinking, oh my God, I got in get in app purchases. That's not what it is. Um, it's gems. Uh, the gems you actually collect by, playing the game you you play the game and every time you level up your character every level that your character gains you gain one gem so when that character eventually dies uh when you come back to this screen you'll have uh, a number of gems corresponding to the number of levels that you made uh that that um character was upgraded for and then and then this gives you a permanent starting uh gift or allows you to choose different appearances uh, or different hotkeys, uh, actually unlocks some, some hotkeys, uh, which you wouldn't normally get in the game. I don't know why they did the hotkey thing. I think that was just, I think this is a tongue in cheek kind of thing, I guess, uh, why they put hotkeys under there. But y you know what I mean? It's, 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 this is, I think this whole thing is sort of a, a, a little bit tongue in cheek, but at the same time, it's also kind of roguelike in its, in its trappings where it's like, all right, you're going to start over again from the very beginning. You're going to get a new map, uh, let's generate it. And then we might as well give you something to start out with instead of the, instead of the normal crappy stuff. Now, since my last character only got to level two, I only have one gem, which isn't enough to, to buy anything. So, or unlock anything. So we're going to do a new adventurer. And I'm going to call them a memory and just going to do a random portrait, something that looks halfway decent here somewhere. Someone with a mustache, maybe, or a goatee, goatee, anybody? Well, I could have taken that mustache guy, I guess. I don't want any soul patches. Give me a break with that. Uh... A little bit more, a little bit more. No, not, not really digging that. Yeah, we'll take this guy. Screw it. Screw it. It's clean shaven. Um, then we get to choose his class. I was a warrior last time. Strong character, heavy weapons and armor. Uh, adventurer is a well-rounded character. Not great at anything. Not bad at anything. Um, I did the warrior thing already. It was okay. I didn't do mage or beast king. Be beast kin or a rogue, um, but let's try Adventurer, since he's well balanced. You can also do a daily leaderboard run, which means everybody today would get the same world generate once per day with leaderboards, so then you can compete. That, that's sort of the multiplayer-esque component of it, where you can sort of compete on a leaderboard with others against the same randomly generated map. Um, so that's kind of cool. I'm not gonna do that right now, but let's just do accept this. And then I get to choose a starting gift. I think I'll choose some health. That usually starts out well. Alrighty then. So, we got a quest that just popped up from Adventure Corp, which is the, your starting quest, basically. It's just go to the first outpost you find and give the king's summons to, to the guild that is there. Um, so we'll just uh, hide this away for a little bit. So you get little pop-ups here. We've got our status of our character down here. It's 31 health, seven magic, no experience yet. This is our log of all the actions that we take, you know, both in battle and out. 
Um, we've got a, this is blinking a little bit for probably to tell me that I need to go to the world here. So up here I can get the world navigator, which is basically what it exactly sounds like. This is what we use to navigate around the world here. This is my character sheet. So bring that over here just so we have it in front of us. Uh, and then our inventory, which is this guy right here. Now your inventory, you can have several bags uh, in your inventory, but ultimately you can't go over whatever the the high end of the weight is. So there is still a weight limit in the bags and all that stuff, even though it looks like a folder that would be on your on your normal desktop here. This is uh, still still acts like you would expect it to if you've played any RPG games. Um, and any good RPG needs some halfway decent music. So they do have a music player here and they've got some uh, music built in actually quite a lot of music built in. Well, is it a lot or is it, am I just, it's just re it's a couple, couple, um, there's a couple things on here. It's not bad. So I will, there's also a gym thing. I don't know what that, I don't know what that's for. Is that to, I don't know what that's for. I don't know what the I don't know what the little gem is. Is that just there for for sake of argument or? Yeah, I have no idea. But anyway, let's hit play. And let's let this run in the background for a little bit. So we have some music to accompany our our journey. So there's a couple things I can do. I can right click on a destination on one of the nodes and I can inspect it. And it'll tell me how far away it is and what the location is and all that stuff. Um, so since we don't really know anything else about this, let's just head this way. We know we have to go to that outpost for our first quest. So I see a, you see a hooded figure in a the distance. They look scared. Approach. The hooded figure appears to be injured and asks for your help. All right. Give him a potion. Reputation increased slightly over there. The hooded figure gains strength and thanks you. Talk. Uh, oh, he, he. Gave me some some treasure. Uh, he gave me some treasure. He thanks me again. Uh, let's I'll take that robe. Actually, I might as well put that on. Question mark. Uh, how would I put that on? Does that go under boots or? Well, maybe because there. Hmm. Let me just put that in the bag for now. And I'll figure it out later. I don't even know if I can equip it. Can I? Properties. Oh, it requires level two, so I can't even equip it anyway. Um, let's talk rumors. The hooded figure says, Those eerie monoliths showed up a few days ago. I wonder if they're here to help. I hear they react when you give them a magical item. Okay. So then there's monoliths around here somewhere. I guess that's this over here or that it's pointing me to maybe. Uh, but let's go to the outpost since that's our first quest. There we go. All right, we'll go to the guild and we'll do quests and we'll turn in our orientation quest. It gives us a supply bag and 25 experience. So I can just actually grab the supplies bag and just put it in my in my bag here. And then we now have a couple bags. Um, so they gave me a bright ring of wizarding. So I'm just going to equip that. I'm going to take the key out of here just so that I have it. And I'll leave the potions in the supplies bag since it, it's already called supplies bag. So I might as well put supplies in there, right? So that's what we've got there. Uh, can't do anything with the robe yet. This this I can equip, right? Yeah, plus one intellect. Yeah, okay. All right. So no more quests there. Uh, they do have storage. So I could drop things off. Uh, here if, I, if I'm if i over encumbered and all that stuff. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if it costs you anything to store anything there, but it's still a nice little thing. We've got 40 gold. So let's go to the armor shop and see if I can grab something decent here because we've got a broken sword and a dirty shirt pretty much is all we've got going for us. So the travel boots, what does that give us? That gives us plus two travel distance, defensive one, Okay, it's only five gold, so I'll add that to the cart. Uh, travel shirts. 
Plus two travel distance. Defense of two. It's probably, yeah, our defense is only one right now, so that's good. Uh, and then the shield is... Shield requires a level two. Hmm. Well, I could try... Let's let's buy the travel shirt. And what we got? Cart total is 17. So, let's get the shield too, even though I can't use it yet. Oh, nope, that's... <laughs> my math, my math is wrong, as, a, as it tends to be. Alright, well, we'll check out these two. There we go. And we will put them on immediately, if I can figure out where to put this. How do I... How do I wear something? I guess I'll put that there. Let's put the travel boots on. Yeah, where does the... Where does the shirt go? Head, charm, ring. Oh, it's over there. Duh. <laughs> it's where the dirty shirt is. That's why I can't figure out what's going on there. Okay. Um, I don't see a way to sell things. So I don't know if there's a... I don't know if there's a way to sell things or not, because I haven't seen anything yet in the game that suggested I could sell these things. You also go on a caravan and get, like, a fast travel, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, all you can really do is throw away stuff, which I guess I'm not going to get much for this dirty shirt anyway, so I'm just going to throw it away. Um, but yeah, I don't see anything that says, like, hey, come here and sell things. Um... I have some potions there. Don't need those yet. How about the magic shop? Scroll of burn. Scroll of burn, huh? I don't even know if I'd be able to use... Well, I guess I'm an adventurer, so I, I'm well-balanced and everything, huh? Yeah, let's add that to the cart. Let's do it. Let's Let's go for it. I'm not even sure how to use it. I guess I would just use it directly from the bag. Yeah, there's a use on it. Flick minor fire damage. Okay. All right. So I just use that directly from my bag when I when I need it. Um. Okay. So I think we're good there. And now we can head to one of these places. So let's inspect this one. 66 to that outpost. Okay. Let's travel there. And there was a whole lot of nothing. Okay. Um, so they, they say, they do warn you, don't go east too soon. Because uh, it starts to get a lot harder the further east you go. Um... So let me just backtrack a little bit. Oh, and we got a battle. So here's how battles work. You get this little battle screen and it constantly moves around the screen on you. And you have to click on things as they move around. There we go. We defeated that uh, gibber. So we'll loot them. And he's got a scroll of poison and a skull. I don't think I need a skull for anything. So I'll just put that there. Let's move this battle thing over. All right, leave and continue. Oh, and a skeleton appears. You can see that the skeletons, you know, everything attacks on a timer. So you have to, you have to follow the the window around to attack or defend, and also, uh, you know, keep an eye on all, on all the things that are going on. It gets worse for some of the other battles, um, and this is where this is where uh, the cute game, the the really awesome game, becomes something becomes an Adult Swim game that you know we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit probably. So we leveled up. Let's choose a skill. Um, we will choose ooh, flee. Uh, permanently increase the chance to escape. Heal. Recover nine points of health. Vigilance uh, is passive. At the start of every battle, your first attack is 40% faster. Ooh. Critical focus is passive. Chance to critical hit 4%. Uh, let's do that. Let's do critical focus. There we go. 
And then, uh, let's loot this guy. Oh, he's always got a skull, huh? Yeah, screw him. Uh, well, I don't want to continue yet. Let's, let's level up our adventure here. So we'll say, give you six strength, a little bit more vitality, perhaps. Sounds like a good idea, which means you can now actually use this robe. Does this, what does this give me? Plus 13% magic power. Defense two. And then this is defense two, but uh, plus two travel distance. Yeah. Which I already get plus two travel distance with the travel boots. So maybe we'll swap the robe out for that just for the sake of argument. And then here's my alignment towards evil and good, as you can see. It's kind of neat to see that there. All right, leave and continue. We come across a deserted home. Do you enter? Uh, sure. We stand at the entrance of the deserted home. There are several rooms. Where do you go? Um, the study? You enter the study. Unintelligible writing is carved on the wall. There's a locked chest. Unlock the chest with one of my keys. Cool. Open the chest. A circle it. An limp ring of wrath. I have a feeling these are cursed. <laughs> Minus 3% attack speed, but plus 20% critical damage. I guess maybe they're not cursed. But I'll take them anyway. Again, I don't think I can... I haven't... So, seen any way of selling things. Uh, go to the dining area. Floor is full of holes. Bedroom. Oh, unburied appears. Alright, let's kill this guy. Three damage, and then he's defeated. Okay, a loot. Nothing found. I got eight experience for it. Okay. I can rest in the bed. Hmm, interesting. Enter the nursery. It smells like rot. There's a paper with strange symbols drawn on it. Tickets. Monolith research paper. Examine. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the monolith that he was talking about, right? The one guy was talking about, so I'll just take that with me. Thank you. Um, the bedroom. Rest in bed. Okay, so that just healed me up a little bit. Okay, and then I got a new message from the guild. All right, go back, we'll leave. Let's see what the guild has to say about life here. Natural enhancements. Ever heard of ghost caps? They are a type of mushroom which grows in caves. They get their name from the way they will make you dead if you eat them. However, if you know how to cut them and season them just right, they are a delicious snack. Also, their poison can be used against enemies. If extracted properly, uh, if extracted properly. If you can bring me some of these tasty mushrooms, I'll extract the poison for you. Sound fair? All right, three ghost caps will give me a ghost slime and 800 experience. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I haven't seen a cave yet, so... Not sure where I'd go for that in the mo at the moment. So I have to revisit some of these areas. I guess, I'm guessing revisiting these areas is not, uh, I can still get waylaid, but I won't get anything at the area that I've already visited, I guess. Okay. So let's see what's down here. Down at this other node. Oh, a fungaloid. Ne'er do well fungaloids shall die. Uh, what did I get? A living seed? Alright, that's kind of creepy, but alright. We'll take that. So I like how... I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's like a little, like, clicking noise whenever it starts to load something. Uh, like, load up a new, uh, scroll like this. Which sounds... is very reminiscent of, like, the old school, like, either you're reading from, you know, like, it's reading from the, the hard drive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because hard drives used to be pretty loud in that regard. So you used to hear them clicking and clacking all the time. So that's, that's kind of cool to hear that, to hear them replicating some of that. Also, it could also be a replication of, like, reading from a floppy disk kind of thing. So you come across a gathering of cloaked figures. They look bloodthirsty. 
Um, avoid? Manage to get away from the cloaked figures. Yeah, I, I have a feeling there's going to be, they're going to be way too OP for me. Unburied appears. Attack. Two damage. Ooh, he's doing lots of damage to me, though. There we go. All right, he's defeated. Nothing found. We got 17 experience and one gold. You see another wanderer approaching. They look curious. All right, approach. Wanderer is holding some treasure and doesn't notice you. Talk. Wanderer says he will sell you the mysterious item. Um, sure. 10 gold. Wanderer takes your gold and gives you the treasure. King's icon. Okay, I'll take that. I don't know what that does. Properties. Teleport to the nearest fort. Ooh, ooh, nice. That would be a nice way to get out of out of <laughs> if I'm really down low on the health and I don't have anything to anything to do about it. Um, talk rumors. Wanderer tells you about a powerful monster and marks its location on your map. Okay, yeah, I've had experience with. Powerful monsters, and they, they suck. I will eventually go to that monster, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, all right. Unburied. And, yep. Keep going. Keep going. Bam. All right. Nothing found there. Leave and continue. You come across an abandoned hovel. Do you enter? Sure. Stand at the entrance. There are several rooms. Where do you go? Um, storeroom. Some bones are piled in the corner. Uh, attic. The floor is sticky. Uh, dining area. Ceiling is sagging. There's a locked chest. Uh, I feel like this is a trap, but let's do it. Unlock chest. And open. Just a robe and a spear, huh? Again, it'd be nice if I could like sell these things off, but I don't know that I that I can. But we'll we'll take all those anyway. Uh, go back, study. Oh, fungaloid! All right, he's doing two damage. I'm do. Ooh, there's a critical hit. Oh, fungalus appears. So now we got two two guys after us. All right, he spawned another help. He spawned a helper, is what he did. So <laughs> you've seen now a small taste of how dickish the game gets with these pop-ups moving around. I can tell you, just in case we don't get to the monster battle, the monster battle is even worse because it will pop up windows in front of you to avoid. So it'll like it'll send like poisonous things at you and you have to click on the small pop-ups that say avoid that are all moving around uh, in order to avoid damage from them. If you don't, then you get poisoned and then you still have to, at the same time, this other battle window is moving around. You still have to keep clicking on the thing there. It's, this is why I hesitate whenever I see an, an adult swim game because they all, they're all very charming. This game's very charming. But they all get to that point where they all have that mechanic in them that's like, I don't want this in my life. I'm going to uninstall this game and never play it again. Mechanic. And this is one of those mechanics. This is like right now it's been, it's pretty manageable. But once I get to the boss battle, it's basically rage quit time. At that point, it's like, you know what? There's no point in playing the game anymore. <laughs> it, it really, it's really bad. Uh, and all, all the Adult Swim games seem to suffer from this anymore. So I, I get the feeling like somebody at the publisher was like, you must do this in your game or else you can't get published by us. Because it's it's too coincidental to not be a standard practice at this point. And it makes otherwise really good games really terrible. <laughs> to the point where you're like, I'm ready to not... like. Hey, I, I would love to finish, you know, Rise and Shine, but 
got to the final battle and I said, you know what? I'm not going to uh, devote any more of my attention to this game because it just it was just ridiculous and, and, and there was no point. Like it got to the point where it's like, yeah, there's no there's no point in continuing playing that. Um, and that's happened with several Adult Swim games that I've that I've picked up. And this one, as charming as it is, this battle system has got to go. <laughs> like I don't mind. It's it's nice that it's you know it's a, it's a cool little thing for when you're doing one little thing here or there. But when you've got pop ups and stuff, and it just makes it it's it's not. <laughs> it, it's. I understand the charm of it. I don't see the fun of it is what I'm getting out there uh, so let's I guess we'll loot the fungalist thing in the fungaloid who has some antidotes so that's great and this as well uh, let's put that antidote up in our supplies bag actually let's open our supplies bag Keep that handy down here, and then I'll put. Uh, where is this at? Put the antidote in there. In fact, I will take this potion right now, which gave me some health. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Okay. Potion of magic and an antidote. You can see our log scrolling by up there. Uh, let's see, we only need 10 more experience for the next level, so that's, that's a thing. Um, we've thoroughly examined that place. I guess we can come over, so now we can get to the monster if we want to, and I don't particularly want to. Uh, let's go up here, shall we? See where this leads me. Oh, skeleton. Skeleton appears. There we go, and we have leveled up, which gave us all our health back, which is cool. Health increased by three, defense increased by one, plus three stat points, plus one skill points. So, let's see, let's grab heal, right? Recover, type magic now, let's not do that, let's get a passive. Uh, your first attack is 40% faster, permanently increased chance to escape. Add one fire damage to next attack, so that's a magic thing. Flee. Uh, let's just grab the flee, I think. Oop. Let's... Not what I want. Alright, learn skill. There we go. Rid of that. And then we got three points to use over here. Let's get... Uh, some more vitality. And some more agility. Keep this guy pretty well rounded. Any loot? Nope. Alright. Continue then. You come across a derelict house. Do you enter? Of course I do. Uh, there are several rooms. Where do you go? Hall. It's full of holes. There's a locked chest. I don't think I have a key. Alright. So we can't do anything with that. Side room. Oh, an imp. An imp appears. He's doing three damage. Which is not okay. We've almost got him. There we go. 27 experience and one gold. You had nothing else on him though. Uh, bedroom? Well, I have a bed that I can rest in, so that's good. Basement? Smells like rot. Okay, bedroom. Let's rest in the bed, get our health back. How about that? Want the best deal on potions, they say? Oh, we got a couple of quests that just came in. Alright, the King's Castle. Uh, hello memory, making your way to King's Castle won't be an easy task. There are three beacons that first must be lit before the King's Gate will open. These beacons are spread out across the island and are protected by the King's most powerful knights. To help you find your way, you, we've put a map of the island in your storage box at the guild. Go to any guild outpost to pick it up. Okay. Uh, due to the recent influx of outsiders, undead, and demons in the area, health potions are in high demand. This trend is putting a lot of stress on the local apothecaries. But with your help, we can both prosper. If you can bring back as many beast eyes as you can to near the guild outpost, we'll make sure you get the best deal on health potions in the future. We look forward to working with you. Four beast eyes they want. Okay. 
haven't gotten that far. Uh, I think we are done in here, though. I don't have a key to open that chest. So, let's see. I, let's move up towards this little town up there, perhaps. Let's see what's in store for us. Oop, unburied. Okay. Ain't no thing. Little critical hit here and there. There we go. And nothing on him, though. But some gold. There's some bandits. They look dangerous. Approach. There are three of them. <laughs> well, this will be the end of me, probably. If I take them on. Um, talk. They don't seem interested in talking. All right, then. Let's fight them. Screw them. Screw them. They're 15 hit points, though. So we're probably not going to screw them that much. Okay, come on. Come on. If they're only going to attack me one at a time, then this won't be too bad. I don't think. Yep, yep, there we go. That's one down. All right, take that. Take that. And... Oof, they are... Oh, block that, I think. Oh, I'm blocking for the whole turn, huh? Oh, avoid. See, that's that's what I'm talking about as far as the things popping up there. There we go. Okay, blocking. Okay, so you have to hit blocking twice. Which makes sense, because you got to block it when it comes in, when the blow comes in. Which I'm not doing a very good job of. Ugh, damn it. Alright, avoid. Oh, still not doing a very good job of it. There's another... Another progress bar when you block something. Oof, okay. So that was our try bandit thing. At least they didn't all attack me at once, which I wouldn't put past this game, to be honest. But you can see the pop ups there of like, avoid this, avoid this. Well, if I faced that monster, it was a bunch of those avoid things, like two of them at once, and trying to do that and also attack, hit the attack button while it's moving around the screen and stuff. It's. You can see why I love this game, and then I absolutely hate it. <laughs> this is the type of game that I love, but I will never finish it because of that one thing. That one thing just spoils the whole freaking game <laughs> for me. Um, but we'll loot this guy. We got Bandit's Tooth, so that's those ought to come in handy at some point. Loot. Smoke Bomb. Another Bandit's Tooth. Kind of don't like that the bandit's teeth and stuff. Nothing, nothing uh, stacks, but I guess that makes sense. Uh, loot and rotten ring of fury. That in there. You can continue search the treasure. We got a bright ring of haste. Plus one intellect, plus two move speed. What does this give me? Plus one intellect, plus nine percent magic power. All right, well, I'm not using magic that much, so let's wear this guy. And bright ring of warding, we'll just keep in there. The oak staff, I'll just take, even though know, I don't, probably not going to use it. Um, I do need to get back to a place, though. So perhaps we will use this key that I have. Let's use that. There we go. We're back to Fort Nofmakla. And we can do the uh, guilds. Do we have anything that we could turn in? Four beast eyes. Three ghost caps. I don't think we have anything that I could turn in. Because I don't have the eyes and stuff for that. Uh, storage, though, they say that we have a map here, and indeed we do. Map of Kingsway. Examine. Alright, here's the 
the ginormous map over here is where we gotta get to and that's as we go along it gets much more difficult so I guess I could leave that in storage I don't think I need to take that with me for any particular reason do I um, yeah, probably not so I guess it's just a general overview um, what I need to do is stay in the inn for eight gold get our health back up And there it is. Excellent. And do I have anything? So, armor shop. If I come over here. Oh, drop items here to sell them. Okay, so I can sell items. So, let's sell for four gold. Let's sell for three gold. What is this circlet? Plus two magic regenerates. Goes on the head. I guess I could put that on the head since I don't have anything else right now. Limp ring of wrath. Uh, minus three percent attack speed, twenty percent critical damage. Um, yeah, I don't really want to reduce my attack speed. Let's go sell this. And Rotten Ring of Fury, what does that do? Minus one vitality, plus nine percent attack speed. Again, doesn't seem like something I'd really want. So I'll sell that for six gold. The Ring of Warding we could sell. Um, I guess I don't need all these bandit teeth and stuff either, but keep them from that for now. Uh. Monolith research paper. I gotta figure out what to do with that. Oh, the travel shirt we could definitely sell. Back for two gold. You know, it costs us a lot more than that. Alright, very good. Very good. So that's... So we can sell things. Okay, I, I feel better about that now. And actually, there's... Shield here. I need... You know what I need? I need a weapon. So... There should be weapons in here, would you would think, right? I guess there's not. Uh, magic shop. No. Potion shop. We should grab that, I think. Let's grab that. And bring it over to our supplies bag. And... Hmm. I don't see any weapons in here. Which is a bit odd, but alright. Bright metal hat of health, huh? Plus one intellect, plus two regeneration. Require level four. Eh. I guess I can... Eh, I can hold off on that for a little bit, probably. It seems like a good one to have, though. But we're not level four yet. Eh, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to take it. So it'll probably work out for me later on. So grab that. Drop it over here. Alrighty then. And... I believe that is everything that we have there. So yeah, we're back to this again. And then we can, we can move around wherever we want to get to further along in the game, but I think uh, I think you've gotten a pretty decent look at it. Uh, I'm not going to go after the monster because I know I'm going to get completely wrecked by it. Even even at this current state where I'm level 3 and stuff, I just know it's not going to work out for me. But you can see it's, it's an interesting concept, but it does it is an Adult Swim game. It is published by Adult Swim Games, so remember before you go into this it's got mechanics in it that are not fun and that's true of pretty much every adult swim game out there it's fun to a point and then there comes to a point where they they all throw in one mechanic that makes you say i'm not playing this game ever again so just be forewarned before you put the uh the nine dollars and 99 cents down for this game that that this is published by adult swim games but my friends this has been king's way uh, it is by Andrew Marsh and published by Adult Swim Games. It is currently 
on sale. It's currently on Steam for $9.99. It is a full release. Uh, as always, I will leave links down in the description so you can do your own due diligence. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And I will see you next time.